Hey everyone, my name is Dr. Galatia Strong. After getting 100% on my NPTE, I co-founded SPT with me to help DPT students actually understand content versus just trying to memorize everything, which is just incredibly inefficient. If you guys enjoy what you see, please check out sptwithme.com for our three and six hour course. Now onto what you're actually here for, let's talk about nutation and counter -nutation. Some people think that the SIJ doesn't move, Others think that it moves. Now, when you think of nutation and counternutation, the SIJ definitely moves. This concept is all about shock absorption. Nutation occurs when there is a need for shock absorption. So think about you walking, you're jumping, running, etc. If you think about running and you land on an extended knee, this is definitely going to hurt. But if you flex the knee, which absorbs the shock, it's going to feel a lot better. So this is the same situation that happens at the SIJ. Your shock absorption is coming from the sacrum moving into flexion and inferior translation, AKA nutation. So every time again, you're walking, jumping, jogging, running, etc., you're in that phase of needing shock absorption absorption, AKA your weight bearing, right? So your sacrum is going to flex and dampen that force. So with nutation, the top of the sacrum, right? The most superior aspect of it is moving anteriorly and inferiorly relative to the pelvic bones. Now this does not mean that the iliac bones are just staying steady, right? They actually move in the opposite direction. So the terms nutation and counter-nutation are just talking about the movement from the point of view of the sacrum relative to the iliac bone. All the bones move. Now remember that the whole spine is attached to the sacrum. So think about how the weight of your spine, right? You have your lumbar spine, thoracic, cervical. The weight of your spine is going to induce this anterior and inferior translation for nutation. So you're looking at the lumbar spine, right? Relative to the sacrum, right? It's anterior to it. So if you have a bunch of force that is pushed onto that sacrum, AKA we are weight bearing, um, the sacrum is going to move forward and down exactly what you see in nutation. So if the sacrum goes in the opposite direction, so backward and superiorly, this would just be defying gravity, which doesn't make sense. Now let's move on to counter nutation. This is the opposite situation, right? So the sacrum does move superiorly and posteriorly. So just like when you run and you land on that stance leg, you're first going to flex the knee to dampen the force, but then to get that next stride in, you're gonna extend it a little bit. You're not just gonna run with consistent knee flexion. And if you did, you would just look like a cartoon character, right? You would just be at the same level the entire time. So you need to oscillate between flexion and a little bit of extension. So this is the same thing with going into counter nutation. The counter nutation is um, analogous to the extension part of our knee, right? The superior and posterior part that occurs when the limb uh, is no longer weight bearing. Now the body wants to oscillate back and forth between sacral flexion, nutation, and sacral extension, counter nutation, in order to provide the optimal shock absorption experience. Now, note that I did not mention anything about rotation. The sacrum actually does rotate as well with both nutation and counter nutation. However, let's just keep it simple and just keep it to um, just the sagittal plane and the frontal plane, okay? Let's not even think about that. Hopefully you can see how you can understand nutation and counter nutation versus just having to memorize what's on a slide. If you like this, check out our website at sptwithme.com for more things just like this. Here's the reference that I used. Feel free to take a look at it if you need more information. See you guys soon.